<laughs> Mary Richards, hello. Hi, Lucy Lassiter. So good to see you again. Welcome to another experiential anatomy video. Our anatomy expert, Mary Richards, joining us from Maryland, right? Virginia, Virginia, actually. Virginia. And I'm in Salzburg, Austria. So we are transatlantic yogis who are, are going to talk today about a burning topic, Chaturanga Dandasan. Yes. Yes. The bane of many a yoga student's shoulder. And this is what is so fascinating about our course, Experiential Anatomy, which Mary is co-teaching with Mama, that because you're a yogi and an anatomy nerd, you come at it from that perspective. So in the course, and as you're going to see in this video now, we're not going to just talk about sort of the esoteric anatomical concepts about mo bones and muscles and movement, but we're going to really tie it to a specific pose, which is what yogis understand and what we love. Um, so, so help us understand. I know that Chaturanga is a, it's like an essential part of every flow class. It's in the vinyasa sequence. It's for, it's the push up part. Um, mm -hmm. so w is it causing shoulder pain? And if, if we're going to do, if we're going to do Chaturanga anyway, even though it's a challenge, can you help us understand the safest way to do it to keep our shoulders healthy for a long time? Yes. So I am a Chaturanga Dandasana junkie. I, I am. I actually do 108 push-ups a day. Not all at once. Not all at once. I do sets of nine or 12. It depends which way I'm rolling that day. Um, it's not Chaturanga Dandasana that's the problem. It's how we're practicing it. Okay. Mainly, we're skipping it. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> no. Chaturanga Dandasana. One moment someone's in up plank, yeah. Chaturanga, and the next they're in upward facing dog. And that transition has been written by the person's rotator cuff. Okay, so that's what's suffering. That's what's holding us up. That is what is what is messing with us. A lot of us have a functional imbalance in the trapezius muscles of the upper, middle, and uh, lower mid back. So I just wanted to ask you because you mentioned it in our last video. What is your favorite muscle? <laughs> <laughs> the gluteus maximus. <laughs> okay. Okay, so back to the trapezius. So, so you're saying that we have a muscular weakness, and then is the rotator cuff a ligament? No, so the rotator cuff is actually composed of four different muscles. The thing is, they're not big muscles. They're small, and so we're using them too much. Right. We're using them to compensate for... A lack of strength in the chest yeah. and in the mid back yeah. in particular. And so what happens is we have this perception, let's say you're doing sun salutations. Mm -hmm. We have this perception that it's one breath, one movement, which is fine. Uh, but we're trying to get through it quickly. And instead, I believe if we slow down and really savor each step of the sun salutation, our shoulders will thank us. Okay, that's so counterintuitive. So you're saying it's healthier to go more slowly, but isn't that spending more time doing muscular action? Yes, and that's how we build strength. Okay. See, we have a a bias, if you will, toward movement in the yoga world. And my personal bias, I'm, hi, my name is Mary and I have a bias and it's towards stability, right? especially for the shoulders. So are you willing, Lizzie, to do some chaturanga and chaturanga tantasana? Let's do it. Okay. But let me take off my sweater. Okay, that's pretty good, Lizzie. I'd like you to actually turn your mat uh, so that it's parallel to your screen. Okay, thank you. Yes. Okay, so would you be willing 
to bring your knees down to the mat yes. and now hang into your upper chest like a like you commonly see. Ow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And the reason why I want your knees down is so that we don't jack up your shoulders. Okay. So you feel how you're sagging in the space between your shoulder blades and you've locked your elbows out? Yes. Okay. Come out of the position, please. Thank you. So we see that very commonly and that's often how people transition from Chaturanga to Chaturanga Dandasana to Urdhva Mukha. And that's exactly the way we don't want to transition. Right. Because again, you're moving from your joints and your rotator cuff. And that's not the way your shoulder is designed to move. So now I'd like you to come back into that up plank position. You know, I'm afraid that that's cut off of the video. So I'm going to just do it this way if it's possible. I'll do it a little off the mat. I think it's only getting the center of the video of my screen, okay. you know. Okay. 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 So your hands are glued to the mat, your fingers are spread well, and do you feel how your thoracic spine is rising above your shoulders? Yes. Okay, we want that because we want your shoulder blades tight into the rib cage. Please bend your elbows a little bit, just a micro bend in the elbows. Okay. Just a micro bend. That's because I don't want you locking out your elbows. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. So your shoulder blades are wrapping around your outer rib cage like wings. You're wrapping your wings around you. Now inhale the breath and float the body down toward the floor. Float down, float down. Yes. Okay. Exhale, push the elephant. Push up, push up, push up. Yes. Bring your knees down and sit in Garasana for a moment. <laughs> okay. So what typically happens, and then just sit comfortably. What typically happens when we make that transition from the up plank to the down plank mm -hmm. is the shoulders shrug up to the ears. Yeah. We're like a turtle retracting its head into its shell. And, and we don't want that to happen, Lizzie. Yes. And that's why I, there's that you know thousands of times the cue about dropping the shoulders. Mm -hmm. And I have no beef with that instruction. The issue, however, is does the individual have the functional strength not to drop the shoulders, but to press the shoulders to neutral and then maintain that neutral position when they change their relationship with the floor? And I'd like to submit that many students do not have that functional strength. Yes, I agree. So what I like to do is I like to have folks do what I call yoga push-ups. Okay. Okay. And so this is how we can establish the foundational strength necessary to keep our shoulders stable and safe in Chaturanga Dandasana. That sounds really good. So how do we keep our shoulders stable and safe? So we start with push-ups. Okay. Quite possibly the greatest functional exercise ever. <laughs> I'm Mary Richards, and this is an infomercial for push-ups. It really is. Okay, so, I, I, yeah, tell me how to do a push-up, because I, I know that I tend to bring the elbows out really wide mm -hmm. when I do a push-up, because it feels easier. Because it is, Lizzie, because when you take your elbows out, you're able to recruit more of your chest muscles. And we actually need to do push-ups with different hand positions, different width, and different elbow positions. Because if you think about rotator cuff, rotate, it wraps around. Right. The shoulder... You want to talk about a ball and socket joint, right? Look at all of this range. Right. And so the arms need to be worked in different orientations so that we address more of the muscles related to the shoulder. And there are about 28 of them. So that's okay. a lot of opportunity. We're not going to go into all 28. No. Okay, so tell me, um, as we move towards closing here, tell me... Give us some homework. Like if you were going to give me one exercise to build strength, what should we be doing? Oh, okay. I love giving homework. It's my favorite thing. 
So you would come to uh, the knee down push up position. Okay. Okay. So the knee down push up position, and I want you to start with the hands a little wider than the shoulders. Okay. And I want your middle fingers pointed directly forward, please. Mm -hmm. And then I want you to inhale and float the body down. Let your elbows wing out. Let them wing out. Keep your shoulders out of your ears. Now exhale and push. Exhale and push. Yes. Okay. Inhale, float down. Mm -hmm. Exhale and push. Okay. okay. Now I want you to bring your hands a little closer together so they're directly under the shoulders. Mm -hmm. All right. And middle fingers pointed directly forward. And now I want you to keep your arm bones close to the sides of the body. Inhale, float the body down. Mm -hmm. Exhale, push. Yeah. Feel how that works you differently. Yes. Inhale, float down. Exhale and push. Okay, now rest for a moment. So what I would say is do those two different types of push-ups mm -hmm. every day, ad infinitum, and you want to build up toward sets of 20. Okay. And you want to keep your feet grounded because typically what happens when we bring the chest down toward the floor and we've got our knees down is the feet will lift. I want you to keep your feet planted and pressing back through the heels so that you stabilize your pelvis mm -hmm. and your abdominals will work more as well. So what is... Um, this is my last question, and then we'll close. What is the, like, one or what are the red flags in the shoulder joint in Chaturanga? Like, is, oh. there, is there a sensation where you just think, like, stop? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so what will happen is if the person, if they're just, if let's say they're doing Urdhva Hastasana, mm -hmm. and just in, initiating the lift of the arm creates pain right here, that's a red flag. Okay. That's their supraspinatus. Right. That's part of the rotator cuff. That means they have an under uh, an injury. Okay. Inflammation or injury. Okay. I'm not diagnosing. This is a guess. They should have it checked out though. And when they're coming down into Chaturanga Dandasana, they'll feel fire in that same spot. Right. Like it's like in that spot between the shoulder and the body. Like yes. if you were going to cut off your arm right where you would cut. Yes, and the way the person will compensate is they'll shrug their shoulders up and they'll roll them forward. Uh -huh. to try they'll to drip them here. down. Yeah, so it's like you're digging a grave with your shoulders and you absolutely don't want to do that. Okay. When you're coming into Chaturanga Dandasana, the chest stays open. The shoulders stay in neutral. Mm -hmm. But what we often see is this right. and this. Right. And we, or okay. I see also like a kind of rigid pulling down. Yeah, and we don't want that either because what that does is it sends Chaturanga Dandasana into your low back. Uh -huh. So we want the shoulder blades to rest in neutral. Like your arms are hanging naturally by the sides of your body when you're standing, that's where we want the shoulder blades in Chaturanga and Chaturanga Dandasana. Mm -hmm. So fascinating. Mary, you know so much. It's like, <laughs> it's like overwhelming. <laughs> it's, um, I have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for sharing with us. It's really generous of you. And, um, I just, I love these conversations. I love finding someone who thinks it's a normal question to ask, you know, exactly. The, the arguments yogis have are so pedantic and hilarious about, you yeah. know, the fingers one centimeter in either direction. This is heretical for us. So thank you for sharing your knowledge with us. Tell us where we can find more of you in the internet. So you can find me on Facebook at A Little Yoga Goes a Long Way or via my website, maryrichardsyoga.com. And of course, at experientialanatomy.com. Here. Um, exactly, yeah. If you go and trade us your email address, you'll get tons of notifications about all the archive of these videos, plus what's coming up. The course is launching next year. It's going to be an online training for yoga teachers. So, so crucial. 
Um, I'm lizzielassiter.com, and there you can link to my Instagram and Facebook and all of that. So thank you so much, Mary. Sending you a big namaste. Thank you, Lizzie. Namaste.